From about as early as the 13th century, it was not uncommon for animals to be judged in a similar fashion to us humans. If a pig attacked a child, a bear mauled a traveler, or a rat simply found its way into food storage, it was believed by many medieval European nations that these acts were of a criminal nature and should be dealt with in the same manner as us humans. It didn't seem to matter whether the animals put to trial were domesticated or wild, and by far the most common animals that experienced the human legal system were pigs. But cows, bulls, horses, and rats weren't unheard of, and even in rare cases there were trials held for moles, flies, and other insects, worms, or even snails or leeches. Perhaps the earliest recorded animal trial took place in 1266 in France, where a pig was executed, though research tells me this may be misunderstood. But despite this discrepancy, animal trials were indeed part of the legal system up until the 18th century, with some minor exceptions. Convicted animals were put to trial in both religious and secular courts, and their crimes ranged from murder to minor damage of property. It may seem like these animals were tried helplessly without the ability to speak up for themselves, but there are actually many cases where the animals were granted their own lawyers to defend them, though I imagine this was usually in cases of domesticated animals for the sake of their owners. However, with the help from their lawyers, there were many animals proven innocent. Such was the case in 1750, where a man and a female donkey were tried for the crime of doing the dirty. But due to both the donkey's defense lawyer and her reputation as a virtuous and well-mannered beast of burden, she was found innocent while the aforementioned human male was executed for his crime. While robbing innocent donkeys of their virtues, one thing, most of these trials pertain to the maiming of persons or destruction of property. In 1386, a pig in the town of Falaise was found guilty of attacking a child and mutilating the poor child's face and arms, for which the punishment was for the pig to have its own face and four legs mangled, and then dressed up in clothes and publicly executed. Seems pigs in general had a habit of harming children, which if you've seen my last video about medieval fast food, these were no pink pudgy squealers, they were rather large, with thick, quill-like hair, and well-sized tusks. If you were caught playing around them and they were in the wrong mood, ooh, it wouldn't be good. It was also deemed possible for animals to have accomplices, such as cases where multiple animals carried out a crime, like in 1379, when two herds of, surprise surprise, pigs, rioted and expressed approval of the infanticide committed by other pigs. The pigs found guilty of murder were of course sentenced to death, but the owner of the two herds, the Duke of Burgundy at the time, was able to have those found guilty of complicity fully pardoned. Can't just waste all that precious pork, you know? The most common method of execution and what was believed to be the best way to wipe clean the deeds of the convicted animal was a death by strangulation or simply being hung by the neck like your local human criminal. At least for the most part, the executions were less brutal than some reserved for humans which is probably due to the edibility of most of these animal convicts. Religion also played a large role in these sorts of trials, as in 1474, a rooster was put on trial for the heinous and unnatural crime of laying an egg. Yep, a phenomenon the local townspeople of Basel deemed the spawn of Satan for fear of the egg containing a dreaded cockatrice. Wild. But you know what else is wild? The fact that over 90% of you guys aren't subscribed yet. So if you're enjoying this type of content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. The last case we'll look at was for Katya the bear in Kazakhstan. Katya was a wild brown bear native to the region and was guilty of mauling two people in two separate instances. Not too much of a surprise since on average about six people die from bear attacks in the US between the years of 2020 and 2022. As punishment for her crimes though, Katya the bear was imprisoned for 15 years before release, where after serving her sentence, she was promptly free to roam the wilds once more. The real surprise here was that this just happened two decades ago in 2004, meaning Katya finished her sentence around 2019, just in time for the pandemic. I suppose just because animals are excluded from our modern legal system doesn't mean there won't be cases like this in the future. As I close this video off, I do have something important I'd like to stress to the viewers of this video, and this pertains to history in general, I suppose.
While many of these stories may seem far-fetched and make the peoples of the past seem silly, foolish, or even downright evil, it's important to remember when we look at past events to avoid looking through a modern scope. What I mean is, our modern ideals, principles, and beliefs differ greatly from way back when, and it's unwise to try to apply modern philosophy to a world so different from our own. We may take for granted many of the luxuries afforded to us in the present, and forget what it may have been like for our ancestors who had so little and struggled every day just to survive. Now don't get me wrong, there's still many things that happened that are and were objectively wrong, but it's not our place to judge, but to learn. For if we forget the past, what's to stop us from making those same mistakes again? I'll finish off this little tangent with an invitation. Instead of focusing on what people did wrong back then, I invite you to look at what they did right, what laid the foundation for modern miracles, and what we have perhaps forgotten that should not be lost. As you learn more about the past, try to apply some of those lessons in your own life. It may not be much, but I promise you it'll make a difference. As always, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more feudal facts. The next one will be back to mythology, so I'll see you all then.